Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Uh, first pond video of 2024. So it's spring, i um, not sure anyone's told the weather gods about that, but it is definitely spring. It's early April as we film this. Um, and that's kind of the time to start thinking about your pond. So I've got a few maintenance tasks I want to do, but I'm also thinking about starting to feed the fish again. In terms of plants, I can't really remember what most of them are, if I'm completely honest. I put out the water lettuces, which are these, the other day after overwintering them. I think that was a bit too early because they're a bit battered and bruised now. But all the other plants are starting to come back. There's a lily, I don't know if you can see that just under the water, just there, starting to sprout back up. We've got some Elodia, we've also got the bigger irises and stuff up there starting to come through. So it's all starting to look good. These plants here, going around the margins, going in amongst the rocks, that's exactly what we wanted to see. Looking really good. It makes it look a lot more natural and covers up most of the liner. Um, the bare patch there, which I shall try and encourage them to grow into this year. But looks good. Happy with that. You may remember the last video that I made about the pond it was me confidently saying before I shut it down for the winter that there were hundreds of fry and none of them would make it through winter. So I rescued them, rescued them, took them all inside and I converted what was my old discus tank into a goldfish tank. Um, so when I confidently said that they wouldn't make it through winter, I've been proved wrong because just right now I can see maybe 50, 60. <laughs> and if I can see 50 or 60, that means there's another 50 or 60 I can't see. So they're actually looking really good. They're obviously a lot smaller than the ones I kept inside, but they're here and they look happy and they're up the surface looking for some food. When do you start feeding your pond again? That's one of the things that, that there seem to be some debate when people I've spoken to about it in the past. The advice I've had has been kind of split into two camps. There's the, are the fish come to the surface looking for food? That's the time to start feeding them again. That's fine. Um, the other one is if you get a week of temperatures above 10 degrees. So the average temperature being above 10 degrees for a week, that's fine start feeding. I'm going to combine the two or have been combining the two. The reason that you're a bit reticent is that if you start feeding too heavily while the water is still too cold, the fish have real trouble digesting that and that's just a world of problems you're inviting into it. They obviously have made it through the entire winter without being fed. I haven't fed them at all so they're not suffering any hardship by not being fed but I'm going to start feeding lightly now because those two criteria have been met. Uh, I feed a mixture of kind of a light goldfish flake and some goldfish pellets. Um, if you had koi or something, this is just a goldfish pond, then you might want to feed over winter some wheat germ and things like that because that's a little bit easier to digest, but I just didn't and it was all fine. So the jobs I want to do to get the pond back up and looking its best is tidy up a bit of the, the plant matter that's died off. I can see some new um, growth coming through from the plants in the centre of the pond and at the sides, but there's some old stuff that's died off. Um, I'm just going to tidy it up a little bit. I've done a lot of it already, so to be fair. Um, I want to address the pump. So this pump uh, and filter, this is the filter. If you haven't seen the old ones, this is a, a solar powered pond uh, and it's been working really well, but it was a proof of concept last year. So it worked, concept has been proved. The pump that I used isn't really suitable for this. It's more of a water feature pump and it gets clogged very quickly and I'm constantly having to address it. It's basically got sponge and stuff which clogs up too quickly. So I'm going to use a proper pond pump. Um, so the idea is the pump lives in that bit, feeds water into the barrel through loads of gravel and stuff like that and then overflows through this um, kind of water folly bit here. But something's gone wrong here and the water's been diverted and I'm losing some water out of the pond so I want to address that a little bit as well. So some general maintenance tasks basically uh, and we'll get it back up and running. There's a replacement uh, pond pump I've just gone for one of this basically it's the clamshell design generic pond pump 5000 and um, you have your pump in the center there one hose tail to go to the thing uh, impellers on this side and it's protected by like this so you've got a little bit more surface area before it gets clogged up and um, it's not a particularly high capacity pump filtration is not 
The biggest concern with this pump, it's quite a large volume for the amount of fish that's in there. I've not really had any problems with filtration that I need a massive pump. It's not like I'm keeping coy or anything like that, so it should do the trick. We'll pull out the pump we're replacing. I'll try and pull it out on this side so as I can work on it a little bit easier without falling in. That'd be nice. So as you can see, it's just this kind of cylinder pump. It's more for an ornamental feature, but I have plans to reuse this somewhere else. So we'll cover that in a minute. But let's just get this off for the time being. So this is the old pump. Um, like I say, it's more designed for ornamental features and stuff. So it's got the sponge down here and the water goes in. The sponge gets clogged really easily. There, rubbish. Whereas this, lots more surface area to get in and the pump is rated to handle some solids and stuff. So the filter will be doing the filtering rather than the pump. And that's what we want. So it's just a case of getting this added and getting it chucked in. So that's the new pump in and running. Um, yeah, a lot more volumes getting passed by there. So now I just want to make a few tweaks because this bit here, we're losing water somewhere. And I think it's just the overspray when it's moving off the rocks. So I'm gonna have a look and see if there's anything I can do. So it's a bit more of a close up of what's going on here. So when the, this is like a bog filter basically. And when it fills up, uh, it's making an awful racket now because I've messed with it. But basically it fills up here, water returns. Normally it fills up a bit higher because I've messed with it, it isn't. And when it fills up a bit higher, it's quieter like that. And then it returns here. And what's going on here is, it's basically just that. So what's happening is some of the water splashing back and going down here and dripping down here and being lost. Not a lot, wee ladybug. But if I can just create a little bit of a, an extension here to start it here, then all the water will go back into the pond and we won't have any problems. So, see if I can find a bit of pipe or something. So I've just added a little bit of clear pipe there and that just gets the water that extra couple of inches stops any of it disappearing down the back and it all returns back to the pond, which is what we want. I did try a bit of this pipe, but didn't really, couldn't find a good way to stick it on easily. So that'll do for now. And then we just cover this up. Jobs are good. Un. And that's what it looks like from this side, which I think is pretty good. Like I say, we're not going for huge amounts of turnover. Just get some water moving. And oh, for free, powered by the sun. Talking about for free, powered by the sun, this is the solar panel that is powering it. Um, we had a little bit of a mishap. <laughs> so I had it sitting here, unsecured, uh, and the wind took it one day and took it for a spin and smashed it off those rocks. But it's just the protective thing that's smashed. The panels themselves are okay. So it's still just about working. And um, so the solar panel there connected to all the gubbins there, connected to the pond pump. Yeah, and like I say, proof of concept last year, worked well. Do it again this year. So I'll link the video to how I set up this with the solar panel and stuff and how it runs, but I got a lot of comments in that video saying, oh, you've done that wrong. There's no point in doing that. Just get a 12 volt DC pump for your pond. The, the issue seems to be the battery, that you don't need a battery if I just directly connect it to a 12 volt DC pump, which you could do. And when it was sunny like this, great. But as soon as a cloud comes over, the pump stops. The battery is just there not necessarily to make it run overnight or anything like that. It's just there to cover the periods when it's not nice and sunny like this and the voltage drops, it will power the pump until the cloud passes and the sun comes out again. It's as simple as that. Um, it works really well. It does get me a couple of hours worth of um, running time when the sun does go down. It's doing what it needs to do. So yeah, if you want to do it differently, go for it. It's not my invention. Now, Let's take a look at the other pond. So this is my other solar powered pond, which hasn't fared so well in that the solar panels have given up the ghost. And um, so I've got two solar things in here. I've got a solar air pump 
and a filter pump, and both have died. Um, I guess I should have brought them in over winter, but I wanted to test them and see if it worked. And no, I know the answer now, they don't. So that's fine. But if you remember, we completely drained this before the winter and moved any fish that were in here into the big tank in the house. So it was dry, essentially. And this is just rainwater that's filled up over the winter and stuff. But there are fish in here. So I clearly missed some and they've managed to make it through. So we've got a bit of Elodia in here to keep them going. But my plan is to move out at least half of the fish that are in the fish tank in the house into this pond. Grow them out a bit this year, see what happens, how we do before putting them back into the big pond. But I think I'm going to be left with quite a large surplus of fish. So might take some to an auction, might sell some off for if you're in and around the Sheffield area and want some goldfish, let me know. I could probably sort you out. <laughs> Um, but the plan for this one is, if I can't find a suitable solar pump, do like a smaller version with the pump from the big pond that I was using. So basically get this one cleaned up. It's more suitable for the size. Um, it does have biological media, mechanical media, UV. It'll do a little pump, a little pond this size, do it quite well. Uh, with a little solar panel, should be good to go. So there we have it, that's pond season here at least, officially begun. If you've already been feeding your fish for a couple of weeks or you're not planning to do it for a few more weeks, that doesn't mean you're wrong and I'm right, that's just, I'm starting it now. Everything in there is looking good, I'm happy with it so far. Hopefully your pond season is going well too. If you like this kind of thing, click subscribe so you don't miss any future updates. If you've got any specific questions, let me know down below in the comments. Ask if you want to see something in a bit more detail, we can certainly cover that for you. If you've nothing better to do on a Friday night at 9pm UK time, come and join us. We have a live stream every Friday. Quizzes, games, beers, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> It's a bit of a laugh. Just come and say hello. Let me know that you're out there and where you're from. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.